Hi there. Welcome all to this live event. My name is Erik Remmelswaal. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Zolder. Uh, that way, that way, there it is. No, there it is, Zolder. And uh, in this session, I will introduce Zolder and Zolder app to you. Uh, during this presentation, you can start submitting uh, questions already or upvote the questions of other viewers. And at the end of the presentation, we will go through the questions and see if we can answer all of them right away or maybe come back to them later. So without further ado, let me first take you back to pre-COVID times. In the spring of 2019, um, Wesley Naden was scrolling through the news and came across an article with an announcement by the city of Tilburg, stating they would start with a smart traffic experiment. This experiment would allow bicyclists and pedestrians to install a mobile app on their phone, which would make traffic lights turn green automatically on approaching them. The goal of the project was to decrease the overall red light time for traffic users. Wesley loves all things digital and decided to download the app. Together with his colleague and friend Rick van Dijn, he started looking into the app how it operated and whether they would be able to mimic its workings and fool the system into thinking he was actually approaching while sitting in his attic room at home. And they succeeded. And in terms of responsible disclosure, they reported the bug to the manufacturer of the app who solved this issue prior to the further rollout of the system. Rick and Wesley talked about their findings in the summer of 2020 at the first ever virtual DEF CON conference. The DEF CON talk was very well received and even became the most viewed talk according to YouTube full, uh, views of the whole conference. And this week again, it was mentioned by Wired, which published an article about it as well. And I wanted to tell this story to give you an idea of who we are. Solder was founded by ethical hackers. Wesley and Rick took, took the lead. Theo joined later and in March this year or last year, 2020, I must say, I stepped in as well. We all love digitalization and especially to research security, security vulnerabilities and threats that derive from the digital transformation and all new technology entering our world. We also love to help organizations in protecting themselves in this digital arena and have built ourselves a platform through which we can help many organizations at once. And that's called Soldar App. You might wonder what the relation is between hacking traffic lights and our app. Well, there is, because Solder App is a cyber, solution, a cyber security solution that is particularly suited for future ready businesses who run their office automation from the cloud. We consider the transition to the cloud not so much as a coincidence, but a, but a coincidence, but a feature of digitalization. Because after all, dematerialization is one of the premises of the digital disruption. Robots, AI, machine learning, they mostly rely on storage systems and office automation ran from the cloud. So I did want to share our long-term strategy with the app, because currently we are in our bootstrap phase, meaning that we as a company have gotten to this point without any external investors and by providing professional services to cover our bills, while at the same time building Zolder app um, to its uh, current state. And this leads to a minimal viable product, which is meant to solve a problem that customers are dealing with today. We will apply penetration pricing as a strategy with the goal to clearly differentiate on uh, price and get a large amount of customers in very quickly. So although this demo and communication is mostly to cover the go live of our product right now, we do have a longer term strategy and that is to first expand the product to cover other cloud services and open source intelligence as well, allowing us to paint a holistic picture of cyber risks to customers. Furthermore, we will in the next stage focus on internationalization in this uh, expansion phase. And then lastly, in the digital security stage, we can start thinking about future technology because at that point we expect to be processing lots of data, allowing us and only then to truly apply big data, AI and machine learning ideas to it. Furthermore, when we have reached this point where a solder app really is a central tool 
with which a business uh, owner manages its digital, digital risks. The goal is to expand it even further so that also future technologies can be onboarded, like robots, sensors, 5G endpoints, VR, AR, etc. But okay, back to the bootstrap phase and solving today's problems. So if we look at the current problem by now, most businesses already use cloud services for email, office and working from home. And in fact, in the EU and also in the US, the majority of businesses rely on Microsoft 365. And cyber criminals have already followed this lead, uh, but the security service offerings available in the market still need to evolve. So there's a lot of new security tech coming out and it, it's also applicable to cloud services, but particularly the cybersecurity services are uh, mostly still built with um, like on-prem uh, IT in mind. Most cybersecurity uh, services rely on quite labor intensive processes and as a cybersecurity, cybersecurity experts are quite scarce, this is a recipe for expensive services which simply are not attainable for smaller companies. But especially these smaller companies require external help to be properly protected from cybercrime and data leaks. And not surprisingly, the situation shows in the status of security among the SME in the EU. In December last year, the European Commission published this report, stating that not only are SMEs still novice in cybersecurity, the talent shortage is a real problem as well, meaning that SMEs cannot get proper help to improve should they want to. And the problem and opportunity is huge. SMEs make up over 99.5% of market space in the EU, covering 60% of gross added value. You might think why nobody has jumped on this wagon yet. Well, the reality is that many have tried to provide support to the SME, but then based on old way of working and still too expensive and hard to scale. So SMEs basically, basically can't get proper help right now. Uh, that is until now. Because Solar App is a mobile platform to make small and medium enterprises digitally resilient. And these are the features. As said, it is a mobile first solution. Reason being is that security incidents are unpredictable and need to be dealt with instantly. So we need to be in the direct working space of the business owner to optimize the service outcome. And there's no better place than the smartphone, which is with the business owner at any time. The first cloud service solar app secures is Microsoft 365, but it certainly will not be the last. The end goal, as I mentioned before, would be to have all cloud services and sources on board in the app so we can paint one holistic picture of the security status of an SME. Through check and scripts, we repeatedly assess the Microsoft 365 tenant for security configuration. And if we spot a possible improvement, this is suggested by providing a single click fix. The detect part makes use of Microsoft Sentinel to detect potentially malicious behavior in the Microsoft tenant. And the remedies could be considered somewhat like the fixes, but with variables. So for instance, reset the password for user X. The general news section allows us to provide users with relevant content even when their tenant is completely okay. So more generic uh, news like a new variant of WannaCry or NotPetya going around, which requires their attention. And last but not least, the 24 seven help function provides the user with several simple ways to get in contact with our world-class cybersecurity experts and ethical hackers. And this might seem like a side feature but I truly believe that it will be rather significant as business owners, especially of the smallest companies, would love to have someone at their side to simply ask a question to whenever it occurs. And this is how the flow runs. It, it's completely automated, so no human cause delays or errors. First, we onboard the cloud service. This comes down to asking consent to the administrator of the particular Microsoft tenant to allow the solder uh, connection to, uh, to take place, uh, have it authenticated. And then we have a connector that actually is looking into the APIs that are provided by Microsoft. So for instance, there's an Exchange Online API, there's one for Azure AD, and there will be cloud services in the future that simply offer one API, but particularly such, so, such a large 
environment at Microsoft simply has multiple APIs. So we also have multiple connectors to support Microsoft. And each connector then logs into the tenant of the customer and runs a couple of checks. And those checks are basically scripts written in PowerShell or Python. <clears throat> and we could at one point decide to onboard uh, to support uh, other languages as well, but this is, this, uh, is um, uh, sufficient for now. Um, and those checks are run at intervals. So for instance, hourly, daily, and maybe it's uh, as quickly as uh, every minute or maybe every week. Depends on what we are checking, uh, how often it needs to run. Then uh, the output of an alarm generates, a, or sorry, the output of a check generates an alarm. And then we first use a use script to determine if a uh, follow-up is required. And this is not uh, the case for every alarm, but because it could be, it could well be the case and in particular events we have already agreed with the customer to ignore specific uh, events because they are accepted or uh, you know uh, configuration is uh, is decided to go otherwise or maybe that we have configured to only raise a ticket uh, if multiple alarms for a particular event uh, are raised so we have use cases that basically set rules for in in which cases an alarm would actually need to be escalated to the customer through the app. And only in that event, uh, the customer will be notified through push notification and it, uh, in, in the sense of a ticket being added to their mobile app. Um, within that ticket, we uh, suggest a particular fix. And this fix would then, uh, of course, um, correct the settings to the state that we advise them to be in. Uh, but the fix is simply uh, some uh, presented to the to the customer as a single uh, button that needs to be clicked if uh, the customer approves and uh, agrees with this particular change. And if he does, he simply opens the app, clicks the fix, so he doesn't need to log into any console just from the app. And then in that case, we get the uh, signal back uh, within the ticket that the fix is uh, agreed upon and it automatically is being run and within the fix, uh, the particular configuration is again rechecked to validate if the the supposed uh, the proposed uh, fix is indeed uh, changed in the configuration of the client. Then, uh, last but not least, of course, the ticket is closed and we're all done. And this whole chain of events can happen completely automated. The only uh, thing that we will likely have uh, as a stopping point is when we uh, indeed um, ask for approval from the customer to to apply the change as it is an actual change to their environment we do need the customer to be very aware of that we what we are doing uh, but that's really then a, um, a step at their point all tickets that we are raising are categorized in what could go wrong categories and these categories are mapped to the various framework of Verizon um, which is used to write their yearly data breach inve investigation report, uh, DBIR. You can Google it, and there's a yearly uh, version of it. Uh, it's probably someone, uh, one coming out uh, soon. And each character in this drawing represents a certain type of digital threat. Making these visuals for, uh, with um, attractive art helps to make the subject that we are talking about more accessible to non tech savvy business owners. And when a security event requires attention, it notifies immediately in simple language and with single click fixes. The Zotto app is very low cost. For less than 20 euro per month, that's a flat fee per business, one can make use of our services. Later on in 2021, we will release the Pro Plan, which includes Microsoft Sentinel. So Zotto app, as I said, is future proof. It's low cost and easy to understand. So future proof, Low cost, easy to understand. We expect to start selling the app, Solder app, early 2021. You can now already pre-register at signup.solder.app. In that case, you will be added to a newsletter, but also will be invited to join our latest beta phase. And in that particular phase, we will offer you with um, a premium plan for three months uh, to test uh, at no cost with our software and to give feedback to us uh, at the same time. Uh, so that's uh, quite a uh, nice offering, I'd say, because we will actually 
test your tenants and see what can be improved in terms of security configuration and actually provide you with fixes uh, at no charge again. So sign up there and uh, we will uh, onboard you. Uh, the last half year, uh, we have already been running a closed group beta with about 15 customers. And at this point, we are ready to launch the latest beta, beta release to a wider group of testers. Um, I'm thrilled that this team of world-class hackers, coders, and consultants has succeeded in building Solder App because as a seasoned cybersecurity entrepreneur, I know that this is a digital game changer. And now for some demo time. So I've cre uh, pre-recorded this demo to um, uh, prevent any demo gods to uh, uh, you know, ruin the, the scene. Uh, so we are now looking at the security feed, which, which is basically the starting point of the app. And it's a, it contains a mix of general security news, like news events, and the customer specific tickets that we are uh, running right now. And then when a new ticket is being raised, a push notification comes in, um, and, and uh, it's categorized, as I said, with uh, what could go wrong drawings. And it's basically a ticket with comments and the customer can add comments to it as well. And then he can um, go to a fix that we have suggested and they can be applied click simply by clicking one button. So no more finding your way in crazy consoles there. Then we go to the services page, which um, it shows that it's possible to connect uh, the app to multiple Microsoft tenants. So if a customer would have multiple tenants uh, to, to manage, we can onboard multiple uh, them, them all basically. And this will be the page where we uh, would also add new services to be onboarded. For instance, domain monitoring is something that we are already working uh, uh, on, which would be uh, like an uh, open source type of monitoring for your for the domain that you own. Uh, or domains that you own and see if there's anything uh, wrong there in terms of DNS configuration. Then getting support, as I mentioned, not uh, probably not uh, the least uh, 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 worthwhile option in the support page. Uh, it provides several ways to get in contact and direct access to world-class cybersecurity experts. And it's easy as that, it's very simple. So that was basically the whole demo. Um, <clears throat> Should you have any questions, now's the time to, to ask them. I don't see any question questions being raised already, so I'll give you some time to think of any smart question now. And otherwise, I will close it in uh, the next couple of minutes. So let me know. Okay, no questions coming in. Well, thank you for watching. I'd say that you go to signup.solar.app to get more information, uh, get the newsletter, and uh, then uh, you you will hear from us as soon as the beta is available, and we are ready to go for general availability as well. So thank you uh, for joining, and uh, have a good day. Oh, right at the last second, new question comes in. Do you intend to include any endpoint security in the app? Yes, um, certainly, because we have now, um, so as I mentioned, we are now connecting uh, particularly with Exchange Online and with um, Azure AD. Uh, that's, that's all Microsoft related. Uh, so the next step would be to extend that to, um, you know, also manage the Defender uh, products of, uh, of Microsoft. So that, probably will be the first uh, endpoint security that we will uh, onboard. And then uh, maybe later on, we would also add other endpoint security uh, tools. But right now we are not too much defining how the roadmap will look like because we simply want to talk to a lot of customers and see what their, uh, no, their, mo their highest priorities would be in terms of uh, adding new services to the app. So uh, yeah, but certainly endpoint security is uh, will be on there in some way or form. 
So thank you for that question. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, sign up and uh, thank you for your uh, time today and uh, have a good day. Okay, bye-bye.